Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today I'm going to show you some pretty cool stuff. This is what we do in data analysis and data science. Uh, a lot of times we get some smaller tasks that are here's a list of data and or here's the data itself. They might give you a flat file, they might you know tell you to look it up in the database and you have to do a query or two or to extract the data. But here's your gener general data and then here's a list of some other data where you know you're to compare and pull out data based on what's in that list that's a very uh, common task to do so if you look here this is a pretty cool data set this the data set right here is a sample of about 1500 1510 uh, YouTube uh, channels and uh, so this tells you the members ID the number of videos the average video or views per video total views subscribers and the date from the start of their channel and if you go way to the bottom here Let's bring that on down here. You can actually see the averages, and it's the best way to look at this, just see a quick little trick right here. This is not what this video is about, but it doesn't matter. So if I click here, I've got this row, and what I want to do is go to view and freeze the pane. Freeze the pane, and that way when I come down, see that? I can see the quickly, okay, that's the number of videos. I have to keep scrolling back up to see that. So there's the average number of videos. Uh, per channel in this sample, average views per video, total views, subscribers, um, and that, that's total views per channel, not total of all the uh, set or people in the set, subscribers, and the date that they started their video or their, their channel. And what I was given, so that's a true data set. That's from the University of California at Berkeley's data science department. It's free. You can go online and go find it. Um, the next one, and there's a couple other universities and data science departments and uh, GitHub and some other places where they have the YouTube data set available for you to uh, play with and mess with. This is just a subset of it. This is only 1,500 and nine actually because it's 15 or 10 plus the top row um, included in there. But uh, it's about 1,509. Uh, so just uh, you know users it's a sample data set so the assignment here is here's a list this is a list of 75 I believe it's 75 or 74 if you include the first row yep 74 uh, users here and what I want to do or what I've been told to do this will be your typical task is to get this category and bring it over into the other page into this data set based on if there's a match based on the member ID now the thing is is this part this page here the sheet 2 and call it the list let's rename it and call it list um, is basically made up data so this one I made up so if you look here what I did was I just took random numbers from the other page and so the other page is live data or not, is correct data uh, from a sample I found on the internet but this page I made this up so this is ran between I just decided let's have a number between 1 and 4 and I carried that on down just go to this once you have the, the formula in there get the little plus on the right double click on it, it carries on down through all your data and then what we have next to it is I decided I didn't want just one through four I want it to be a B C or D so if you look at this formula here uh, it's a multi-conditional uh, if statement so if it's if B2 this value equals four it's D if it's three it's C if it's two it's B and else it's A that's what this formula does and what the same thing I did was I carried on down click double click on that carries on down through all and you can see it loaded it in D D B C you can see all that so I want to carry that in the other page so let's go here what I want to do to do this is I want to create a new uh, field or column we're gonna call it category right and what I'm going to do is, this is really cool how I do this, so or how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from the other list, bring it back here through a VLOOKUP. But I'm going to show you, it's going to be a little bit more complicated, and not much, but a little bit more complicated because the VLOOKUP by itself does not uh, take into account, well, what if the number's wrong or don't match up, or if it's the wrong data type. So I'm going to show you that in that too in a second. So let's first do this. Let's say I want to do a VLOOKUP, okay? So we've got that in there and it even tells you what you need in here so what we're going to do is the lookup value in this case is going to be this guy a2 see that that's our member id we start at the top and then next what i want to do is i want to go to the uh list so let's do this watch we'll go here to the list see it automatically puts the name of that page on there and then what i want to do is 
it depends on which field I want to bring in. I have to start here. So if I was only bringing back this, I could do that. I would only bring back, or I'd bring up back the entire row of a, or column of A. If I wanted to bring back B, I'd bring back both of these and then say two after it. I'll show you in a second. And this one I'd say three. So what I want to do is bring back all three. See that? So we do that. And then what I have to do is I have to tell it, okay, that's this part right here. What index number? So starting with one, two, three. I want three. If I wanted two, it'll show me these numbers instead. But I created those letters so I can have that. I want three. And then the thing is, I, do you want a, a exact match or a close to match or approximate? So that you have to choose true or false. I want an exact match. So let's do this, do that. And what we'll do is we just hit enter and watch what happens. It takes me back to the first page, right? Which is my live data or my correct data. And uh, it goes and says, okay, this one has a match. And it not only has a match, it is letter A category. Okay. And here's the formula. You can see it right here. Now watch what happens. I'm going to right click here. See right here, I'm going to double, not right click, I'm going to go to the right, bottom right, and then I'm going to double click on that and carry it on down. So it's got C, D, and stuff, but look at these NAs. NAs means that it's, it'll tell you right here, it's not, it, there's nothing there. So if you click on this, it'll give you this little guy right here, which tells you that the value is not available for the error. Or not, it's not available, so there's an error because there's no value, as I said. So what we need to do is we need to correct for that. So how do we do that? Let's go back here. And let's take this VLOOKUP, and what we want to do is add something to it. So we're not going to add an IF, what we're going to do is add an IF ERROR. This is a pretty simple uh, formula to use, IF ERROR. So IF ERROR has two components. See it down below, it tells you right here, value, and then value of the error. So if there's no error, I want to return the first value, okay? If there's an error, I want to return the second value. So let's take a look at this. What I want to do is this VLOOKUP, just the way it is, I want to return that if there's no error. But for these NAs where there isn't a value in the other uh, table, that means that th these guys that have NAs do not exist in that other list that I was given. So, or that I created in this case, but that's the way the assignment would be. You'd be given a list like that to look it up. So what I want to do is take this, see this, and put a comma right here. And I could put error, I could put uh, zeros if I was doing numbers. In this case, I just want it blank, right, like a null value. So if I do this, what I'm basically saying here is if error, do this part in the end. If it's not an error, do this, this whole VLOOKUP. That's the way it's correctly done here. So what I'm going to do is I'm hit enter. And look, we have the A again still. Now these still say that because I did not carry the formula down. So let's go here, let's go here, and look at that. Now we've got B, A, let's go through this thing and see where these values lie. There's some areas where there's no, because there's no matches. But you can see here, see that? There's several of them showing up. We got D's, C's, B's, A's, all down through there. And I can also take this freeze pane off Let's unfreeze it so you can see it more clearly. So let's go through it. B, A, D, C. You see the whole panel of it all the way through. Okay. So anywhere in there where there was a match between this list and this uh, separate list that I was that you would be assigned or given in a data analysis task um, or a data science task or a piece of it, uh, you can see here clearly that those are matches between the two and uh, the other thing is what you also want to do is also make sure that you check for uh, you know nulls or bad values here so uh, in this case we could have actually gone here and decided you know what let's check and see if there's duplicates this little button right here we'll do that and you can actually remove the duplicates and let's say I just want to see if there's duplicates in user IDs. So let's do that. Oh, there's five duplicates in there. That doesn't hurt the val the return here in this case because I'm just looking to see if it exists in there. It doesn't matter if it exists more than once. That would be a separate task if somebody wanted to know, okay, is it in there more than once? That's something else. 
But in this case, you could have done that. And if it's a huge number set, that would make your task a little bit easier on the uh, bandwidth or the processing uh, power of the computer you're running on, especially if it's a really huge ta uh, list or if the other one's a big list that you're comparing it off of. But in this case, it does the same thing. It doesn't affect anything. It doesn't change anything. Um, but that's how you do a VLOOKUP correctly, and that's taking into account. With VLOOKUPs, you definitely want to take into account, well, what if there's an error? Especially when you get a large data set because you could scroll through 300,000 rows of data and miss a lot of the, there, there could be a couple of nulls. There. Maybe there's three nulls in there. Well, you'd miss them scrolling through it most likely. If you have this if error in there, you can identify and say, oh, I want to know if there's an error. You could actually say this. You could say uh, you know, something else, whatever you want. You could make it a number. You could do whatever you want, and it'll return it that way. So that's how you do a VLOOKUP, and that's how you do this that uh, task. So once that's done, you carry that on down, and here's your set. And then I could take that and say, okay, I want to graph, or I want to maybe what I want to do is I want to create a pivot table, and I could go and uh, go to insert and uh, create a pivot table if I wanted to, and then create a char pivot chart um, based on that and show you know how many were Bs, how many were category A's, how many were D's, what percentage were they. You can do, pick the top percentage or grand total percentage and uh, figure that out. It's all very easy to do from there. But the main part here was to go over V lookups. I want to show you exactly how to do one. Um, so you can look again here, I took A2, which is this, was my first, I'm looking up member ID. I went to the other page, as soon as you click the other page, it put in the other page's name, and then I chose the three columns um, because you wanted, I wanted the last column. I don't have to, if I only wanted to choose the second column, I don't have to choose A through B uh, instead. If I did that, I would, and I made this a two, I would be returning the number one through four instead of the letters A through D. But I wanted the letters A through D, which is in column, uh, this CAT column. So if we go over there, you know, you can see it right here. You've got, uh, that's the column I wanted to bring back. And if we go back here, um, so I wanted that, and then false, I use that because I want the exact match. I don't want a approximate match. I want an exact match to come back. I want to know, is it in there or is it not in there, period. Uh, so that's how we did that. And the if error then calculates or brings into, you know, well, what if there's a uh, no match? How do I want to identify those? And I identified them with a null or a blank. That's exactly what we did here. And then you can go on and take this and graph it and do what you want with it. But that quickly shows you how to do a VLOOKUP, how to do it you know, between a data set and a list that you're given, which is a co very common task in data analysis, and it's usually a very common component of a data science project, uh, where you might have to do this numerous times. You may do this in another language, R or something like that, but this shows you how to quickly do an Excel and uh, quickly see what you're doing, quickly uh, uh, get an answer out of your data, and quickly see if it exists or doesn't exist. And then you can go from there and get percentages and everything else. I hope you found this interesting and fun and uh, informative and helpful. Uh, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe down below and like and have a great day. Thanks.